Hello boys and girls, today I want to talk about finding the perfect studio monitor for your studio. That has become quite difficult these days. There are so many options, there are so many companies trying to sell you the perfectly neutral sounding studio monitor. It's hard to choose, right? They all seem to be perfect. And there are very different concepts, you know, three-way designs, two-way designs, ported speakers, closed boxes, ribbon tweeters, soft dome tweeters, metal tweeters. It's a freaking jungle. Today I want to explain how you can find the right speaker for you and your studio, what you need to pay attention to and how you actually test a speaker properly so it works in your studio environment. Here we go! As you might know, I've recently just built this new room and this room here is the third control room here at Cola Keller. It's a smaller control room than the other ones. It's mainly built for editing and for recording, but also for me to make my YouTube videos. But I have already done some mix and some mastering work in here on this new setup. So this means Recently, I was forced to look for new speakers and to try some speakers. So I've, you know, just been in that game. And this room here used to be a live room. And it is, as you can see, treated acoustically. And it sounds good, but it is a small room and it has not been professionally designed by an acoustic engineer like our other rooms here at Cola Keller Studio. So this is more DIY and a lot closer to the studios most of you guys probably work in. So in this video, I wanna talk about how I chose those speakers and how you can find the right speakers for your place. But there will be a follow-up video, maybe in one or two weeks, where I show you how to set up those speakers or I show you how I set up the speakers in this room because as you might know, the placement is crucial, especially for the bass response. And I also tried sonar works, room correction. I tried manual EQing in the bass to get the bass more linear. So that was really interesting. And I show you my results in another video. And this video is not about telling you that you should get those Eve audio monitors, which sound fantastic in this room, don't get me wrong. It's more about giving you a general advice about how to proceed when you need new monitors. The first recommendation is you need to test every speaker in your own working environment, in your studio where you're gonna mix. That's very important. Don't go to a store to compare 15 different speakers. You know, you don't know that room. Usually the, acoustic, the acoustics are really bad in that room and they might just fool you and it's just gonna confuse you. Don't do that. Try to find out which three, four, five different speakers you wanna test. We've got the internet, right? Do some reading and try to narrow it down to three, four, five speakers. And then get them into your room and test them there. Second recommendation, don't A, B speakers. Don't get several speakers into your room and to compare them. Just don't do that. It's just gonna confuse you. Usually when you go from one speaker to another, especially in the mid range, things will be turned upside down. It will sound very different. Both speakers might sound good, but very different. So that's just going to confuse you. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck your brain. And it's very difficult to make decisions when you switch between speakers. I wouldn't recommend that. Just get one speaker. Because when you are comparing speakers, when you are a being speakers, what you do is you are listening to the speakers. You are not listening to the music. Think about that for a second. And I don't want you to listen to the speaker. I want you to listen to the music. So here's what I want you to do. You get one speaker, you put it into your room and you start working. Don't compare it to anything. Start working. Because what you want to find out is if you can do some good work with these speakers. It's not like your hi-fi home system that is supposed to just sound great that's supposed to make your shitty mixes sound better. You know, this is a tool, a working tool. What you want to find out is, can I do good work on those speakers? How do we find out if we can do that? Well, first of all, you just start working. You start working on one mix and you mix an entire song on those new speakers. That's the first thing you do. What you want to find out is, how does it feel to work on those speakers? Because 
if you buy those speakers and you want to do this professionally, you're going to end up, you know, sitting in front of those speakers for eight to 10 hours every day. So if it sounds annoying with those speakers, if it's a pain in the ass to work on those, these speakers, you know, like NS10s or something, it's just, if it's no fun to work on these speakers, don't get them because work should be inspiring and work should be fun. So don't get the most precise sounding speaker if it is annoying and a pain in the ass to work with it. So after eight hours of work, let's say after having done your first mix, having mixed your first song, how do you feel? Does it feel good? Is there a lot of ear fatigue? Do you feel like, oh, this was too much? Or are you still fresh and open? That's something you should ask yourself. Do I have fun when I'm working? That's the first thing. Speakers should be fun, all right? Second thing you should analyze after those eight hours of work is how easy was it to make decisions? When you are mixing, you are probably making whatever, a thousand decisions a day, each EQ move, each whatever, reverb, everything you do, every everything you touch is a decision. And a speaker is a working tool that should make those decisions as easy as possible. So let's just say that half a dB of EQ, how difficult, how hard is it to tell if this is good or bad? Can you really hear the difference, how precise, is the feedback from that monitor. And the easier it is to make decisions because you can clearly hear what's going on, the better this monitor is. Let me sum it up. After eight hours of work, you have to analyze, was it fun to work on this speaker? If, it's, if that's a yes, that's already pretty good. Second thing is, how was decision-making on this speaker? Was it easy or was it difficult? So if that's another yes, it was easy, you probably got a pretty good tool. But here comes <laughs> the second discipline. It makes no sense to buy a speaker that is fun to work on and where decision making is easy if the mixes don't translate to other speakers. So what I want you to do is you mix that song, then you take a break. Maybe after one day you return to the mix, make some adjustments, take a break again. But then I want you to listen to that mix on different other systems just to see how good it translates. And don't get me wrong, translates does not mean that it sounds great everywhere. Because if you have a shitty system, it's gonna sound shitty. If you have, whatever, a car system with way too much low end, it's gonna sound boomy. But with translates, I mean, do the ideas, the, the vision you had while mixing, how this is supposed to sound, like big or small or wide or narrow or ambient or dry, whatever, is this, translating through different sets of speakers. So if you want to create something really ambient and lush and whatever, check it out in your car, check it out in your hi-fi system, check it out in on other studio speakers and just see if this translates. That is the most important thing. Once you've checked out that speaker, I want you to repeat the same thing with other speakers. And then you compare those mixes. You can send the speakers back to the store, you know, put them on your credit card, send them back. At least in, in, in Europe, you can do that for two weeks or something. Plenty of time to test those speakers, send them back, get another pair, send them back, get another pair, send them back. Then listen to the mixes. Remember which of the speakers was the most uh, fun to work with and uh, compare those mixes and see how they translate and then make your decision and get that speaker. And you know what? Once you've chosen that speaker, once you are sure that this is the right speaker, uh, if it translates and if it's fun to work on, if you have found the right speaker for you, please don't let the internet or me or somebody else tell you it's the wrong speaker. No matter if it's expensive or affordable, you know, if it translates, if it's fun to work on, hey, you found your speaker. All right, let me sum it up one more time. First of all, you want to get a tool that supports you. That means mixing should be fun, right? It should be fun. It shouldn't be a torture to listen to those speakers. You know, I fucking hate NS10s. I know people can great, make great mixes on them, but it's no fun. It's no fun at all. So I want to have fun. That's the first thing. The second thing is, like I said, the speaker should be a tool that works for you. So 
it should make your decisions easier and not harder. So whenever you ask yourself, do I need this EQ or not? Do I need more reverb or not? The speaker should let you know if that's a good idea or not. And the second thing is make sure those mixes translate, translate to other system. And the only way to find out is to work on those speakers in your environment, not to check them out in the store, not listen to people like me on the internet telling you that those EVE monitors are the best in the world. They work for me, but they might not work for you, you know, whatever. So you need to test it yourself. And it's the same thing here. I was actually forced to test those EVE audio speakers by Warren Ewart who told me three times I should check them out because he really loves them. And I was always like, ah, but you know, I'm not into ribbon tweeters that much. Why? Because I thought I knew ribbon tweeters because I, I had heard quite a few Adam audio speakers and they always sounded wrong to me, always sounded too harsh and always sounded a little too detailed for me because too, de too much detail, if I hear too many mouth noises and too many clicks and symbols and too much stuff, it just, you know, shifts the focus from the important stuff to something else. So I have never been in love with Adam speakers and those were the only ribbon tweeters I knew. Uh, so I was a little afraid of them, but I can tell you those Eve tweeters sound very different. I, they, they sound really soft and they sound great for guitar music, if you ask me. So I ended up getting a speaker I didn't expect to, to, to like, but you know, whatever, it works because I was doing exactly what I just described. I put them here, I made sure the setup was as good as possible and then I started working and so I fell in love with them. Surprise, surprise. But you know, they might not work for you. You try whatever you want to try. Okay, so this was my little recipe for, for getting the right speakers. Uh, here's a little warning. That will be a difficult process. It will be difficult to decide sometimes. And you might have some sleepless nights because, you know, every speaker has different advantages and disadvantages. And every speaker, like, tells you a different story of the song you are mixing. So... You know, it can be a nightmare until you have found uh, the right solution. But you know what's even worse? What's even worse is if you have several speakers and you switch between them. The last time I did this was between my Dune Audios and the Amphion, not the ones I have now, but the Amphion 118. And that was when I was mixing a boarded Retro Gore album. Mix turned out cool, no problem. But I was switching between those speakers. So whenever I started working on the Dune Audios, for half an hour and switched to the Amphions. It was like, everything was turned upside down. They have a, I don't really like the the, the 118 uh, lower mid-range for, for metal, but they have a completely different mid-range. So my whole world was turned upside down. Everything sounded wrong in the mids. But then I forced myself to keep on working. And after half an hour, when I switched back to the Dune Audios, it was like, again, you know, so I was confusing myself the whole day until I decided to just work on with one speaker. Um, because again, you don't want to listen to speakers. You want to listen to your music. Please keep that in mind. That's all for today. There will be a follow up video where I show you the setup of these speakers. You let me know in the comments which speakers you like. If you have found the right speakers already or not, if you are still looking for the perfect partner in the studio. Uh, you let me know how you like Amphion, how you like Eve Audio. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, okay? Hit that subscribe button and the ding dong bell. I also want you to subscribe to my email list because you'll get a lot of cool stuff. You'll get discounts every now and then. You will get free IRs, free drum samples, free multi-tracks. We have a closed Discord server with uh, I think two and a half thousand people and a quite active community where we just talk about audio production and, and guitars and beer. So um, if you subscribe to my email list, you'll get a link to the Discord server, blah, blah. Uh, I see you there, right? And um, uh, yeah, looking forward to showing you how I set up those speakers. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. That's all for today. Greetings from Germany. I love you all. See you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.